us a video. The law of the teacher. That's what we're going to talk about today. A teacher is one that imparts instruction or communicates knowledge of religious truth. So we, we're talking about ministers, preachers, rabbis. In uh, the Hebrew, a rabbi is, you know, it's nothing but a, a teacher, a spiritual advisor. And then the, the student refers to the rabbi as the rab or master that shows the, the importance that they put on, on their teacher. You know? um, go to Proverbs. Anybody? Yes, sir. You go to 1 7, chapter 1, verse 7. Oh, my God. Okay. Oh, Teach. Go to 1, verse 20. 2, verse 6. Demon. Oh. 3, 13. Cam. 4, 7. Stand the man. 7, 1 through 3. Kyle, you up to 1? Chapter 8, verse 35 and 36. Curtis, you got your Bible? Can't tell. <laughs> Chapter 8, 35 and 36. Is Brandon going to do one? Sure. It's the, the last one. Chapter 9, verse 10 through 12. Okay, so this is just, we're going to start on. Uh, uh, showing the preeminence of, of the seeking of knowledge and wisdom and the importance that King Solomon put on it. Mm. Go for it. All right, chapter 1, verse 7. Allow the fear of the Lord is the foundation of true knowledge. Mm. But fools despise with the discipline. Mm. Mm. Come on, saints. <laughs> Go for it. Wisdom, wisdom cries aloud in the street. In the markets, she raises her voice. Yes, she does. I like it. Amen. For the Lord gives wisdom, and from his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. Isn't that nice? So straight from the Lord, the same, the same mouth of, from whence words came that made, that created the world, spoke Amen. the world into existence. The knowledge that, that we get, the impartation of knowledge comes straight from the Blessed are those who find wisdom, those who gain understanding. Come on, somebody. Cam Newton. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And in all you're getting, get understanding. Mm. Come on now. That's my favorite. All. That's good, isn't it? My son, keep my words and store up my commands within you. <clears throat> keep my commands and you will live. Guard my teachings as the apple of your eye. Bind them on your fingers. Write them on your tablet of your heart. I like that. I like that a lot. So when he says son, it's Proverbs was really a long letter from from King Solomon to his son Rehoboam is what the you know, what the theory is. That, that may or may not be true, but that's that's kind of the theory behind it. Some of them some scholars say that you know parts were made at different times, just like with the Psalms. I mean some people say that so many are or King David's other people. Don't so much. But anyway, so when he's saying something, probably read a bow on there. Proverbs 8, 35 to 26. For those who find me, in, in, find me, find life, and receive favor from the Lord. But those who fail to find me, harm for themselves, and all who hate me, love death. Hmm. That is the, that's the Maccabees. <laughs> Fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Very many right. your days will be many, and years will be added to your life. If you are wise, your wisdom will reward you. If you are a mocker, you will only be son. That's nice, isn't it? That's what it is. That's what's good. What's my favorite? Say it. 27, That's it. Say it. <laughs> one reflects the face, so one's life reflects the heart. Hmm. It works. I love it. So, you know, the point of that is just in everything you do, put your heart into it, you know, and it shows. Amen. You know, if a guy, if a guy comes up here and he says, hey, I want to be your teacher, you know, I want to, I want to quarterback 
your team to a, a successful spiritual life, or you know, at least you know, coming out of something to begin a new walk. But uh, but his heart's not in it. You know, I think I'm sure that it shows. A guy that that, that doesn't mind laying down his life as someone that's worthy to follow. You know, a, a quarterback that that uh, has to leave the game every time he gets a you know boo boo. You're not gonna you're not gonna he's not a good leader. Um, so it's the same in the spiritual world. World, and you just whatever it is that you do, uh, cleaning the uh, you know the toilets while you're here, or vacuuming, or cutting the wood, or digging out the roots, or whatever. <laughs> or uh, you know, just put your heart into it as a deal. And uh, Proverbs just speak so loudly to our lives, you know. And they're timeless, the biblical truths and the Word of God are timeless. That's what's one of the things that's so special about them. Uh, a couple of my favorite rabbis. Rabbi Ishmael said, He who studies in order to teach is afforded adequate means both to study and to teach. Right? Mm -hmm. Rabbi Meir said, He who studies Torah but doesn't teach it despises the Word of the Lord. I like this. And Hillel, who was uh, the first century, the schools of rabbinic thought were divided between Hillel and uh, Shammai. And he said that he and Jesus were very similar, and, and uh, they think that their paths probably crossed. Uh, a big, uh, one of Hillel's famous, most famous sayings was, uh, was the same as Jesus' golden, golden rule, except it was in the... Uh, in the negative, not the positive, like Jesus said, you know, do unto others. And Hillel said, what you would rather someone not do to you, don't do that to them. Basically the same thing. But anyway, Hillel said, an impatient man is not fit to be a teacher. Mm. Amen. Mm. I like this. No man can reveal to you anything but that which already lies half asleep in the dawning of your knowledge. Mm. So... Which is to say that, that whatever we're doing here, whatever a teacher might help bring out, it's it's in there somewhere. You know, that, that you've got greatness and a teacher is someone that's supposed to, to provoke you to a, a higher level. Uh, Khalil Gibran, one of, my, one of my favorite writers, 1920-ish Lebanese. Um, the teacher who walks in the shadow of the temple among his followers gives not of his wisdom, but rather of his faith and loving Okay, an example of of, uh, of teaching. Go to uh, go to Genesis twenty two with us. Can I borrow a Bible? Uh huh. Here. Ooh. I changed your That's fine. Thank you. you see how it is. It's part of the spiritual and supernatural thing. My God, it's not good enough. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we have uh, the uh, the account of Abraham's test when asked to sacrifice his son, right? Mm -hmm. So it is exactly what it is, and then you can read the story as is written, but, but what a teacher would attempt to do is say, let's see, go to verse 2, take your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love so much, go to the land of Moriah, go and sacrifice him as a burnt offering on one of the mountains which I will show you. Right, so what we have is a, an example of, of messianic typology. What they say is that the New Testament is concealed in the Old, and that the Old Testament is revealed in the New, and that it all it all correlates, right? And so, what a typology is is taking taking a nuggets from the Old Testament, showing how it it's a type and a shadow of what's going to happen, right? Saddled uh, his donkey. Right, like Jesus came in on the donkey, chopped wood for a fire. And placed the wood 
literally placed the wood for the burnt offering on Isaac's shoulders, like Christ on the Via Dolorosa, mm -hmm. the way of sorrow. Mm -hmm. um, we provide a sheep for the burnt offering. Christ being the sacrificial lamb, right? It, it mentions also on the third day of the To uh, give me John nineteen twenty nine. Uh, John nineteen twenty nine. So, yep. A jar of wine vinegar was there, so they soaked the sponge, put the sponge on his cock of it as the point, and lifted it up to Jesus. Yep. So this is in the last hours of, of the life of Christ, right? And what, what a teacher would try to do is to take what happened and stretch it out, use it to, uh, to the advantage of learning more about the Bible. Right? So a lot of things from the crucifixion of Christ can, can lead back to uh, Exodus 12.22. So there's a correlation between John 19.29 and Exodus 12.22 in the, uh, the hyssop that was uh, dipped in blood and placed on the doorpost for the Passover, right? So there's a correlation to what happened with, at the death of Christ that was a part of a, a transformation that would lead to salvation of mankind, right? So this correlates to the hyssop and blood on the doorpost from Exodus 12 and that the angel of death was to pass over those, those marked doorposts, right? So typology. Types and shadows. But we just keep an eye out for them. They're open break. Okay, so a few points of what a what a teacher is and does. If you stop growing today, you stop teaching tomorrow, right? And this is uh, it points to the story of Jehu. Remember, we mentioned him last week. I think the the tenth king of Israel, and that he was used by God to exterminate the house of Ahab, right? So he was God's instrument, but then if you, if you notice in the 2 Kings 9 and 10, at the end of his life, he stopped growing and went back in the way that he was started, you know, uh, not, not following the Lord anymore. So even if you see a chart of all the kings of Israel and it says, this one did evil, this one did evil, this one did evil, his, it says, what it was You know, being God's instrument, we had the opportunity to go down as one of the greatest kings, but completely fell apart in his later years. So always keep keep growing, keep growing, keep reading. If you plan on telling someone something about something, make sure that you're deeply invested in it. That's all. And that brings me to this next one. If you don't know it truly, you can't teach it. Right? This is uh, give me Matthew four twenty three, somebody, and then give me Second John one nine. Uh, we see countless examples of this, though, in Christ's teachings. You know what uh, what he said was God the Father. Second John one. Mm. One nine. One nine. And uh, so Christ's teachings, he knew that it was in his merit to speak and to teach. Christ was in his great teachings and master. People wonder how he says, call, you know, call no man, Rabbi, call no man, Father, because he's, he's I have to hop at you. It's okay, go for it, Lance. Second John 1 9, or second John 1 9. Anyone who, is, anyone who runs ahead and does not continue the teaching of Christ does not have God. Whoever continues in the teaching has both the Father and the Son. That's good, right? So to deeply abide within the teaching. Fully take part in. Give me that Matthew one. Jesus went throughout Galilee, <coughs> teaching in the synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, and healing every disease and sickness among the people. That's it. That's what he did. He's the teacher. Point three the best teacher is the best student. Right? Give me a, a Titus 2 7 and 8. James 3, 1 and 2. So, uh, 
The Talmud says a wise man learns from every man. And I said, don't ever think you can't learn someone from someone else or everyone else. And like what I mentioned earlier, don't stop growing. What you want to do is constantly, you know, be putting things in. If you if you teach, you don't want to, uh, you know, set back on your laurels and just be okay with the knowledge that you already have. You need to teach from a running stream, right? If you stop learning and you, just, you continue to teach, it's like the old, uh, the old guy that's the stereotypical boring professor or whatever that everyone's sleeping from because he's teaching from a stagnant pool, right? You want to teach from a running stream and you're going to do it. All right, give me, uh, give me that Titus. Show yourself in all respects to be a model of good works and in your teaching show integrity and dignity and sound speech that cannot be condemned so that an opponent may be put to shame having nothing evil to say about us. Amen. Amen. Not many, not many of you should presume to be teachers, my brothers, because you know that we who teach will be judged and more spiritual. We all stumble in many ways. If anyone has never had thought and what he says, he is a perfect man and able to keep his whole body in check. Good, right? So a, a teacher is a, is a high calling, and uh, you know, one would be held to account if you were to, to convey a message that was that was a falsehood, and you and you spurred people on to, to believing something that's completely false, and you'd be judged, right? Of course. Number four, effective teaching comes through changed people. The more you change, the more you can become an instrument of change in other people's lives. All right, so this is important. I'm going to mention this on Sunday. Is that, you know, us. How about, uh, give me Mark 5, uh, 519. You want to? Mark 519. So this is the story of Legion, right? Who was in the tombs. And God knows what. In mm -hmm. the tombs going nutty. Right? All chained up and scarring himself. And this is figuratively and somewhat... Literally, the story of us, or myself, you know, before. And what the deal is, is that people in my life thought that there was no change that was going to come. I mean, I did okay for a while, fell apart so many times, it's just ridiculous. So many times, and just, like, it's classic Zach Norris meltdowns. I mean, terrible falling apart, you know, it's crazy stuff. It doesn't make sense to anybody. And, uh... And so I was that, you know, I was that wild man in the tombs, chained up and scarred himself and stuff, right? So I was changed. And what what the deal is is that when people see the change in us, they're gonna say the ones that thought that nothing could have changed you before, they're gonna say, I need to know what happened. Because if a guy, uh, you know, if Ron was perfect his whole life and just continued to be, they'd say, uh, they'd say, well, all right, that's good. But a guy that went through it just extremely radical change, they're going to say something, something powerful got a hold of that man, and so it's just an evangelism tool, you know, and if we see it, go ahead and read that first. Yeah, what is it? If you not commit him, let's say to him, go home to your friends, mm. and tell him how much the Lord has done for you, and how he has had mercy on you, and he went away again, and he was famous, not plus on the sheets that down the room, never run my world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect, yeah. Um, it's it's a biblical principle that works there that, that Christ, uh, having saved this man, the guy's like, you know, you rock, bro. I, I gotta follow you. I'll follow you wherever. I'll support ride. Yeah, you get some of that. He's, he's all about it. So he wants to follow him. Jesus says, no, bro, you gotta go back from where you came because I gotta go this way. And I need everyone to see this radical change that took place. And then they're gonna ask you what's up and you're gonna minister to them. And it's, it's evangelism 101. Right? So that's what we're doing, and that's effective teaching come, coming through changed people. Amen? Five is uh, be more concerned with what your students are doing, not what you're doing. And this is just that if, if a teaching is a calling, that you'll be, that you'll be uh, deeply invested in what, what your students are doing. You'll lay down your life in a sense. Six, spend more time questioning answers, not answering questions. Mm -hmm. So it's not filling out a scantron test here. We're trying to learn knowledge that, that uh, not just the filling blanks, but knowledge that you can take with you. And uh, 
No, there's a, a couple of examples with like Martin Luther questioning uh, activities of the Catholic Church led to, to where we are today in the Christian Church. The Maccabean revolt was the force. They didn't just go along with the, the depravity of the rulers. Um, number seven, I hear, I forget. I see, I remember, I do, I understand, right? And so this is the why we have the classroom, why we have these these little things. We're just trying to, to instill a, 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 a something that's programmed in you to do each day. So that when you find a piece there in uh, your devotional life and in your study life that when you're not required to do it, you know, really you'll not want to lose that piece. You know? So that's all that I do, I understand. My life, it's not just seeing the humans. Uh, the root meaning of the word education is to draw out. So that's like we mentioned earlier, is, is that uh, you've, got a, you've got it all in you, and the teacher is just supposed to, to coax it out. Uh, communication, uh, the Latin word communis means common, and it's that communication to, to take full part in, in good communication has to be a common ground, right? And so we're lucky in that here we have, uh, we have the common ground of the word, you know, that we all know when we get here that that this is Christ and Christ is the program, and that uh, so we automatically have this common ground. That's, that's helpful. Teaching involves three essential components intellect, it's your thought, it's what I know, and then it's also what I'm filling my head with, right? So it's what I'm reading, it's what I'm, what I'm writing, what I'm watching, what I'm thinking. Emotion is the feeling, which is where the transformation comes from, right? So when we, when we learn something that that works on us and really touches our hearts, and that's where the transformation comes from. Volition is the action of what I'm doing, so this is what you're studying in your free time, it's the action. So the ABCs of why we teach and that's it. Uh, the teaching is one of the five-fold ministry gifts, right? So we're going to start a class here real shortly about learning your spiritual gift, and so have a major and a minor spiritual gift. And uh, they used to have one at Cape, but the guy that's teaching it just started director in Brazil, so he's, he's not there anymore. He's been there years, about five years, and he's the best teacher, for sure. But, so he's gone now. But anyway, it's a really powerful class, and there's a, a quiz of like 200 questions, and you answer them, and, and it, it basically spits out your major and minor spiritual gift. And I printed one off, and, and we're going we're gonna to start doing that story. But I think it's important. I think once you know or at least have an idea what you're, you know, you could read this and say, well, that's completely wrong. I've never seen it happen that way, though. It didn't bring some sort of truth. Like mine, it said it was teaching, and then my minor was exhortation. It is a, it's encouragement. I don't know about that, but, yeah. But nobody's arrived yeah. yet, huh? I'm going to encourage you to shut your mouth. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Prophecy <laughs> of <the hell. laughs> But so none of us have arrived. Amen. I, I'm, a, you know, I'm still a mess too. But, but we're working on things, and the teacher should be should be good at uh, encouraging the students. But we're all working on stuff. Right? So the fivefold ministry gifts: we got pastor, apostle, evangelist, teacher, and prophet. So you'll see the, the ministry gifts in uh, Corinthians 14, I think, and then Romans. So the major and minor spiritual gifts of our family. So I'm wrong with the gift of it. Um, Give me a Second Chronicles 15.3. This is going to be the scripture for Sunday. And then so the scripture, the verses that we're going to dig into on Sunday. I'm excited. Give me a Ezra 7.10. Mm. That's powerful. It's yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. It's and I would I would advise going through and reading the, the 
few verses that are before and after that. It's real powerful. And it's it's a, a prophecy to Esau that, that was going to be the, the next king of Israel. And it's about uh, Israel being in a falling away point that they so often are. It's like the wanderers in the wilderness and the, the three to four hundred period, the year period of the judges, and then the roughly same amount of time in the period of the kings. They're constantly going to and away from God, right? And constantly being blessed and and cursed, and the blessings and curses are, are placed right in front of them, and so often they, they fall away. But this points out an interesting point that, that at that point they were without a teaching priest, right? That, uh, that points to, to uh, us being stagnant of the people spiritually and mentally, is, is what that points to. And a teaching priest is, is an active priest that's showing it not just in his words that you see him doing it. You got something? I just, that just spoke out. It's powerful, isn't it? Yeah, no, they, they didn't have a teacher, but they were hungry enough. They sought it out themselves. And then he allowed himself to be found by them, right? Awesome. It's really a powerful portion of scripture. What was that, Ezra 7.10? 7, 10. You got it? For Ezra had devoted himself to the study and observance of the law of the Lord, and teaching its decrees and law of Israel. Come on now. This is why I love Ezra so much. He's, he's a powerful figure. And Ezra, through his diligence, was uh, the one through memory that maintained the, the sanctity of the scriptures after the temple was ransacked and, and the scriptures were destroyed. I would also recommend Psalm 119 being on the tablet here, you are, you know, in, in the Long Island Team Challenge, I had to write it like 25 times one time. But it ended up being, being a good experience, and now I love it because I feel similar uh, about about the scripture in the law. Mm -hmm. This right here, this is the word for for Torah, and it's also the word for instruction and teaching. Teaching and instruction are what, are what the Torah means. And so this is it. This is a, a top, a bav, a resh, and a he. Right? And the interesting thing about the letters of the Hebrew alphabet is that each one is a, is a picture, it's a character, right? It's a, a word, like this is Tav, you know, a word, and then it also has a number that goes with it. The number for this is 400, and so they each have a word, a, a picture, and a number, right? So there's deeper meaning real throughout every word when you dig down into what the Hebrew says about it. It's, it's either placed in the numbers or what the words mean. In this, Tav, the last letter of the album, it's funny that it's the very last letter because it, some say it means mark and others say cross, right? And so it's funny because the first letter of the alphabet is Aleph and the word means ox, which points to the old school of sacrifice. And then the last word being cross points to the new school and that Christ was the, the final sacrifice on the cross, right? So that's interesting, but cross, Vav, some say hook, some say nail, right? But either way, it points to also the, the picture of it. Um, Resh is a, a high person, like a, you know, a priest or someone who's placed on high, right? And hey means a, a window, or you could say to reveal, right? And so what, what this is, what we see in teaching is that it's a picture of the, set of the sacrifice that Christ made on the cross. And then the cross nailed, he was the high person in order to reveal something. And so what the message is, what the message is, is that teaching is a sacrifice. Amen? Amen. So if you're going to teach, realize that that uh, can't just talk about it. You got to be about it. Mm. That it's uh, if you're going to tell someone to do something, you got to live it, and they're not going to respect you if you don't. You don't have to uh, to beat someone into subjection to, to have them do what you, what you ask. You know, you guys, you know, respect me because you see that I care, and that I'm, I don't I don't care to get in and work with you and 
the evening you might not always. The funny thing about a leader is that people want a leader until the guy says something they don't agree with, mm. typically. Yes. But, but you guys, you guys uh, accept me even when I say things that piss you off. <laughs> and I appreciate that. And I accept you also. And uh, so that's it. Teaching's a sacrifice. So if you're going to do it, be prepared to get all in. And uh, 